What is up everybody? It is Kova with Tweak Music Tips. We are back with another video with the live demo of the Alpha Theta XDJ AZ 4 channel professional all-in-one DJ controller. This unit replaces the original Pioneer DJ XDJ XZ and shows off many upgraded features. With the built-in Wi-Fi and support for various media types to suit your DJ style, record box cloud direct play compatibility, new 10.1 inch large touchscreen, ultra low latency wireless monitoring with Sonic Link compatible DJ headphones like the HDJ F10s and many more features. We had the one and only Alpha Theta Demonstrator Pulse on the show and Pre Young Johnny breaking down all of the features. And if you stick around till the end of the video, you'll see our HDJF10 giveaway. And if you're not familiar with us, we're a live Twitch stream broadcast where we interview DJs, producers, have product reviews, DJ competitions, and much more. If you're a DJ who's looking to step up your game, make sure you watch us every Wednesday and Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern time, 10 a.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Central European time. Well, enough of the chit chat, let's jump into the video. So let's talk a little bit about this AZ. Yeah, so I think what we've rolled out here is what a lot of the XZ users are gonna want to upgrade to, or somebody who's using like an RX2, an RR, any of the other two channel all-in-ones, even an RX3, which has already got a big display on it, but this is now that, you know, the 10.1 inch touchscreen. And I think a lot of DJs are gonna to wanna to go to, to something like this because of some of these improvements. It's not just cosmetic overhaul and going to four decks. There's a lot of internal things as well. Let me walk you through some of the things. So I'm, I'm just gonna go left to right. The mic section has been improved. So uh, on the mics, we've got a new push to talk. So you can turn it on and off by clicking the button on your, your two mics, but you can press and hold, and this will give you a temporary on. So, you know, a lot of us are DJing, you, you pick up the mic with one hand, you wanna flip it on, but you wanna be able to put the mic down because it's you're doing it in that break of the song. So if you hold it, you can see it blinking under my finger there. As soon as you let it go, it's off. So you've got that ability to just press and hold, talk, and then you release it and you're done when you're done talking. And you can put your live mic down and not worry about it like feedback or funk. So that's fantastic. You got your talk over, clip signal lights for the two channels, your level controls, your EQs. And one of the things that used to be up here with the XZ that we've moved into the software is the feedback eliminator. So that has been moved from here because we found that a lot of people are doing set it and forget it. Uh, and speaking of set it and forget it, the settings, we've got this brand new mixer settings button here, which gives you quick access on the panel to a whole bunch of things that you would want to have access to be able to change, but don't want to go menu diving for. So things like your mic settings uh, in the feedback reducer there. So off light and heavy, whether your beat effects are going to mic one, mic two, or both. You've got a recording set up here. And what's cool, one change from the XZ is you can now record to USB two. So it's not just USB one. So before you had to have it in the right port, you can record either one, but here you can also start and stop your recording, do track marks. Input selector switches, we, because of the bigger display, don't have room for the selector switches as a physical switch. So it's now digital and you can choose between your deck or PC connection, line, phono, and a Bluetooth input. Now, unlike the amazing Omnis Duo, which has that really cool feature of doing uh, buffering, this is just a conventional Bluetooth. It's more like, think of it as like an auxiliary input. So you don't get the buffer to the deck. I, I wished we'd be able to do that, but, uh, Unfortunately, it just didn't make it in. Uh, your EQ switch, you've got EQ or, or full isolator on your channels. Headphone options, uh, you have your stereo and then mono split. And a really cool feature that's been brought over is the link Q. And I'll talk more about that, but here you've got the ability to actually adjust that link preview volume. So you can go zero to minus nine dB and three dB increments. So if it is too loud, you can always dial that back. I find mine the way I cue everything. Uh, channel curve and crossfader curve, as well as your crossfader assignments are all just tucked away right in with that the mixer settings button. So if you wanna have quick access to those things, just tap the button away you go. And a little gear icon also appears in this menu, which gets you to the, your utility page, which would have been the same as no matter where you were pressing and holding the menu button, you get into your utility settings. So again, instead of menu diving to get to these things, because some of these are available elsewhere, you've got this mixer settings page, quick access, which I absolutely love. Looking at the decks, you're gonna see these jogs look familiar, but the feel and sound is so much better than it was before. This is like the CDJ 3000. People have argued with me about this, but I would suggest that these are quieter, 
have a lighter and heavier setting than a CEJ3000 does because uh, I've got one here. So I'm going to dial them both all the way to their lightest settings. And this one continues to spin over the 3000 jog when they're both approximately the same amount of spin. And even at the tightest setting, if I go all the way the other way, it feels like it stops just a hair faster than, than the 3000 does. So I'm going to suggest, and we, you know, Fight me if you want. The, the AZ's jogs are better than that on the 3000. But you do have that very familiar jog indicator. So the, the screens that are on these things are the same resolution and you know layout of the 3000. So what you're going to see with a lot of our products, and I know PJ mentioned this with the, the Groove 6, you know, moving the, the hot cues above the, the jogs. We're making a lot of strides to make it so DJs are getting comfortable and moving from gear to gear. And you will see that, you know, you can look at these, these two pieces side by side. The layout for everything is familiar. And it's like that with the majority of our things. The bulk of the difference is going to be where the pads are located. Controllers are typically below the deck, whereas a CDJ, they've almost always been up and to the left or above the jog. So there are some small differences, but things like looping, your playback, your pitch, unless you've gone battle style where you just rotate everything 90 degrees, it's always in the same place. So it doesn't matter what piece of equipment you're coming from you have muscle memory as to where those controls are. So very familiar operation, regardless of what piece of our equipment you're using, whether it's you know CDJ from 30 years ago or brand new all-in-one. This, of course, the new deck select buttons you'll see above each deck. This is where you're going to be able to, to flip your controls from deck one to deck three. And so if you're browsing something and you load up on, on your other deck, you have easy toggling between the two layers on each side. This makes it very intuitive and simple to uh, to control. I love the fact that it's just, it's very bright blue and white, and you can see the, the indicators for your load will match that as well as your deck labeling on the screen. So you can see without you know much hesitation, which deck you're in, which deck you're controlling, very easy to use from that regard. Now we have a question here from uh, DJ Spawn, and I think it has to do with how this unit was made. He asked, why is there only one yeah. USB for a computer? Four channels could have had two DJs with computers. That is part of the ZX. What you're telling me there is that you're spending $3,200 on a controller. My <laughs> question is why? Why won't you go get a Flex 10? That has two USB ports and it's a controller. If you want it because this is an all-in-one, go and prep your USB drive. Use it as an all-in-one. Yes, it can do uh, control for Serato and Rekordbox, Serato coming in December. Uh, but the intent of this unit is an all-in-one unit that you're playing standalone. So if you wanted to switch over between DJs, prep a USB drive, pop it in, play one song, transition over to the other DJ software. It's not hard. I mean, I, I'm not trying to make an excuse. I'm a DJ. I'm a realist. This is how I would use it if somebody said, I need to transition. All right, everybody. They're going to give away a their actual headphones with the actual transmitter. Look, he's he's doing the Vanna White. Let's see. So this is the actual head. <laughs> HDJ F10 TX. TX includes the transmitter. There's a second model, which if you had like the AZ, you could just get the F10, not pay for the transmitter, but you want to be able to use it with uh, with other gear, you get the TX model. And this includes the transmitter, 499 MSRP. So we're going to be giving one of these away. So what I need you guys to do is I need you to go to, I want you to actually tag some friends because I saw, I saw Music Spasms did it. So I want to continue that trend. Anything updated on the screen per se? Yeah, so the, the screen is uh, is a bit brighter, a uh, higher refresh rate, better resolution than the old XZ. And before when you were browsing, you were looking at like eight lines worth of, of songs there. Now you've got like 13 lines. So more information. Plus you've got the ability to show both two or four deck overviews on the bottom. And people have asked, why are you not doing four decks of scrolling waveform? And the truth is that we've looked at where that's necessary and found the majority of people aren't actually using four waveforms live. Uh, that having two where you're matching one to another is the key bit of information. So more that they want to reference where the position is of the song in general. So if I'm on deck three here and I've uh, skipped all the way through, that you can see what the status of that deck is, even if you're controlling another deck. Uh, you want to know information about it. You still have toggle your time, remaining your time elapsed. But the, the scrolling waveforms, we found two was was suitable here. So yeah, the, the ability to browse it and see your, your tracks down the bottom. There's a lot, of, a lot of stuff going on, but the navigation as well has changed. This has improved to be a lot more like the CJ3000. So again, that familiarity and moving between the various devices that you're getting something that you're used to. 
So you know you can load up your your tracks, you can browse through your playlists. It, it's very intuitive uh, to be able to do that. Let's go over a little bit about the mixer. Now, the mixers is it modeled after like a, a Nexus nine hundred or the A nine, etc. It is, yeah. So it's it's more like the A nine uh, than than the than the Nexus two because we've laid it out in a very similar way. You can see here. We, obviously, I mentioned the headphone Q link but also the channel selector. So if you're on high enough res, you can actually see this. My channel numbering is wrong. You can also see that I've got a triple X, triple X model. Uh, this is a pre-production unit. So some of the silk screening is not quite accurate, uh, including my button layout. So it is numbered the same way as the, the decks are three, one, two, four. Mine says one, two, three, four. Uh, but yeah, to, to be able to directly assign an effect over to one of the channels, Love it. No more coder knob to do that. You do have the, the knob selecting your effect. You've got the frequency effects uh, as well, an X pad to control it. But one of the best things is up here on the screen, you can slide this panel in and out, or you can just tap the button to, to open it. But that's your beat effect. So I can see on the screen when I'm moving my finger on the X pad, or if I've changed one of my parameters, you can see what it is. And you know what the what the values are going to change when you when you go and engage it. So really cool and intuitive beat effects section taken from the A9, you know, with the um, the use of this uh, touch panel. So I uh, absolutely love that. Um, the sound color effects, the same as you've got on the A9 as well. So you've got the six effects plus a parameter knob and a color knob for each of the of the channels. You do have the 32-bit ESS uh, chipset for the audio processing. So it sounds really good. Whether you're outputting from your headphones, your your booth, your master, or going to a recording, whether it's a USB or to uh, to a USB stick, uh, you do have high quality uh, high quality audio with three band EQ on the master as well. Can we talk a little bit about the outputs? So uh, outputs, you have uh, XLR for master, you have a quarter inch for booth, uh, you have uh, RCA for master. Um, inputs, you've got the two mics, which are both combo jack for XLR and quarter on the mic. Uh, you have RCA inputs for both channels three and four. Uh, and so you can see I've got a, a CDJ set up here. Right now I'm on internal deck mode, but if I wanted to switch over to external, uh, I can show you that in a minute. But uh, you do have the ability to connect in turntables or CDJs and uh, and bring that in as well. And then there's a USB-C to connect over to the computer. 